Hi, I'm Alex and welcome to Super Make Something Basics. Today, we take a look at resin 3D printing with help from the Elegoo Mars MSLA LCD printer. Since the release of the original MakerBot Thingomatic in 2010, 3D printers have become widely available for hobbyists and makers everywhere. Today, it's possible to print models using a large variety of materials with printers available at many different price points, making 3D printing the almost default tool for anyone interested in rapid prototyping their designs at home. Until recently, most hobby 3D printers relied on a process called Fused Deposition Modeling, or FDM. In FDM printing, a heating element first heats a print nozzle to around 200 degrees Celsius, and then uses a stepper motor to extrude plastic filament that is melted as it travels through the nozzle onto a print bed. As the plastic extrudes out of the nozzle, the printer's print head moves across the print bed, depositing a continuous stream of melted plastic. After completing a print layer, the print head then moves up a small amount and repeats this process until a model is fully built. More recently, printers that use a process called VAT photopolymerization have also become available at price points that puts them within reach for home use by hobbyists and makers. In this process, a UV light is used to selectively harden a photosensitive resin polymer that sits inside of a vat at the bottom of a 3D printer. Because this process is light-based, the achievable print detail is usually higher compared to hobby FDM printers that rely on stepper motors to move a print head. The two most popular VAT photopolymerization printers for makers today either use a process called stereolithography, also known as SLA, or masked stereolithography, also known as MSLA. In an SLA approach, a liquid, photosensitive polymer sits in a reservoir or vat of a 3D printer along with a print bed. A laser is focused on various places on the bottom of the vat surface, selectively hardening material to create each layer. After this, the print bed moves up slightly and the process repeats, slowly drawing the print out of the vat. The advantage to this approach is that it is possible to create prints with incredibly fine detail, though the print speed is somewhat slow as the laser must expose each area of the print individually. In an MSLA approach, the vat, photopolymer, and print bed are set up in the same way, but there is also an additional LCD screen which exposes all areas that should be hardened in the layer to UV light simultaneously, while masking off areas that should not be hardened. This simultaneous exposure can speed up print time compared to an SLA approach, though the print resolution is slightly lower, since the level of detail that can be achieved with mask stereolithography is determined by the resolution of the LCD screen that is used to expose and mask the resin from UV light. That being said, the achievable detail with both of these approaches is typically significantly higher than the resolution that is possible with hobby FDM printers, especially in the Z direction. Whereas both VAT photopolymerization techniques can produce prints with at least a 50 micron or 0.05 millimeter layer height in the Z direction, the minimum achievable layer height for hobby FDM printers is usually only 100 microns or 0.1 millimeters. Compared to FDM methods, the process to create resin prints is a bit different. To explore this process further, and to see the difference between FDM and resin printing firsthand, Elegoo Inc. was kind enough to send me one of their Mars LCD MSLA printers to make this video. The unit has a 120 by 68 by 155 mm build volume and is available now. The unit arrived in a well-packaged box with both the printer and other items safely nestled in styrofoam. The printer itself was additionally protected by a clear plastic wrap and a static cling film on the touch-sensitive LCD screen. Overall, I found the build quality of the unit to be very impressive and think that the unit is well-designed with the majority of the printer's body and other components made out of a brushed aluminum and the cover made out of a translucent orange polycarbonate. In addition to the printer itself, the box also contained an instruction manual, a power cord and AC adapter, a pair of micro cutters, a 2mm hex key wrench, a plastic scraping tool, some mesh filters in order to clean and place unused resin back into the storage bottle after a print, a set of disposable surgical masks to help counteract resin odor, a Ziploc bag with more Allen keys and replacement screws, a pair of disposable latex gloves, a plastic measuring cup with spout to transfer resin into the 3D printer's vat, and a USB thumb drive with printing software, printer documentation, and a test model. Interestingly, the box did not contain any sample material to print with, something that is common with FDM printers, so if this is your first SLA or MSLA machine, be sure to pick up some 405 nanometer photopolymer resin when you order your printer as well. I would also recommend to pick up the following additional items. A bottle of 99% isopropyl alcohol, a small funnel to make transferring unused resin back into the print bottle easier, additional latex gloves, 
a roll of paper towels, a food container with integrated strainer to more easily clean off finished prints with the isopropyl alcohol, a smaller food container that can be used to clean finished prints off with water, some isopropyl alcohol prep pads, and a lint-free cloth. These last two items can be used to clean off the printer's LCD screen and plastic FEP film on the bottom of the print vat without scratching them. With the unit unpacked, the first step was to plug in the power cord. The power port, power switch, and USB port for printing files from the USB thumb drive are all located on the back of the unit. I really like that this printer uses a flash drive instead of an SD or micro SD card like my other FDM printers, since USB ports are generally found on any computer, which makes transferring files extremely easy. After the cord was plugged in, I next toggled the power switch, and the unit quickly booted up to the main menu. The next step was to install the build platform, so I went into the tools menu and used the manual jog option to move up the printer's z-axis. I then removed the printer's orange cover and loosened the thumb screws holding the print vat in place in order to remove it from the printer. Removing the vat also exposed the LCD screen in the base of the unit, which is used to mask off the UV light to create each print layer. Based on comments that I found online, it seems that the plastic FEP film can sometimes form a vacuum with the LCD screen during the printing process, causing it to get damaged when the print vat is removed from the printer. To account for this, I added small strips of masking tape over the LCD screen's bezel, which will give the vat sufficient additional clearance to keep this from happening. It was now time to install and level the printing surface. I first slid the printing surface assembly onto the printer's z-axis carriage and tightened the black rotary knob to lock everything in place. After this, I used the 3mm Allen key included with my unit to loosen the two set screws holding the printing surface in place, which loosened the ball joint in the base of the printing surface assembly. I then placed a piece of paper onto the LCD screen used to mask the UV light, and pressed the homing button on the interface LCD, which caused the carriage to move down until the metal plate made contact with the masking LCD. This allowed it to perfectly level out against the masking LCD surface. I then gently pushed down on the metal plate to keep it in place while I retightened the two set screws in the printing surface assembly. Finally, I used the jaw controls to move the carriage back up, slid the printing vat back into place, and tightened the two thumb screws. The printer was now set up and ready to start printing. After putting on the included latex gloves, I first plugged in the USB drive and again removed its orange cover. I next gently swirled around my resin bottle to make sure that it was thoroughly mixed and measured out roughly 40 milliliters of resin with the included measuring cup, since this was the approximate amount of resin that would be required for the included test print, plus a little extra just in case. I then poured the resin into the resin vat, and after this, replaced the orange cover, navigated to the folder containing the Elegoo Rook CBDDLP test file, selected it using the touchscreen, and clicked the play button. This started the print. During the print process, the print head moved the print surface up and down towards the masking LCD screen, exposing each layer of the model to UV light for a set amount of time, before raising slightly to allow more resin to flow underneath the cured layers in order to build the next one. One thing I thought was very cool was that the LCD screen on the front of the unit showed me which layer was currently being exposed, along with other information such as elapsed and remaining print time. Printing on a resin printer can also be a bit unnerving at first, because it's not possible to see whether or not the first layer of your print adhered to the printing surface correctly, both because of the opaque resin and the size of the printing surface relative to the vat. This caused me to sit by and watch the printer for a bit until I could see the part emerge from the resin, but everything worked the first time without issue. After the print completed, I carefully removed the printing surface assembly from the printer and then freed the test pieces. After this, I rinsed the pieces in 99% isopropyl alcohol to remove any excess resin, followed by a quick dip in some clean water, and placed them outside for about an hour to allow them to finish curing in the sun. I have to say that the level of detail achieved by this printer is amazing. Not only are there no visible layer lines, but tiny details like the interior winding staircase and text on top of the test pieces came out crystal clear. This is a no doubt due to the 2K HD resolution LCD display that the printer uses for the UV mask, which is a higher resolution than what you find on most HD monitors and TVs these days. Overall, I was very impressed with the capabilities of the Elegu Mars and the MSLA printing process in general. With the test print successfully completed, it was now time to print a custom model. To do this, I first installed the Cheetubox slicing software used by the Elegoo Mars on my computer, which was located under the slicing software folder on the included USB drive. After the installation was complete, I launched the Cheetubox program and was presented with a user interface that would feel familiar to anyone who has used modern FDM slicing software packages like Cura. For the test print, I wanted a model with lots of fine detail, so I opted to print the My Mini Factory Star Wars Death Trooper model by Paul Braddock. 
A link to this STL file can be found in the video description below. After loading the model, I first scaled it down to 30% and then rotated it by 90 degrees. Next, I navigated over to the settings button where I first clicked on the plus button in the menu's lower left corner to load the default parameters for the Elegoo Mars printer. After this, I could also use this menu to change information about my machine, enter parameters about my resin, and change overall print options. In the print menu, I made sure that the layer height, bottom layer count, exposure time, and bottom exposure time parameters all had values within the range suggested in the Elegoo Mars manual. Other options would have allowed me to change the info structure in order to save some resin and edit other advanced settings, but I chose to leave these at their default values. One interesting note is that unlike in Cura, it's necessary to generate support structures for your model with a second processing step. Navigating over to the support tab in the top right corner of the window presented me with various support settings that I could modify, as well as presets for light, medium, and heavy support structures. Since this would be my first custom print, I opted for the medium option and then clicked the plus all button at the bottom of the tab to add support to my model. This caused a tree-like support structure to generate in places where my model would need it, similar to what happens during an FDM slicing process. Satisfied with my model settings, I navigated back to the part tab and clicked the slice button which generated a CB DDLP file that contains the print instructions for this model. After slicing was complete, a new window popped up which allowed me to scroll through and preview each print layer, kind of like the model had been scanned using an MRI, which I thought was pretty cool. This window also contained information about my resin type, required resin volume and weight, an estimated price of the print based on the cost of the resin, and the total print time. Happy that everything looked correct, I finally clicked the save button to store the print instructions on a flash drive and closed Chitu box. After adding more resin to the vat, I plugged in the USB drive into the printer and started the print. Interested to see how the Elegoo Mars compares to my other machines, I also printed the same model on my Monoprice Mini Delta FDM machine. The parameters I used for each print can be seen on the screen. While the print settings of my Monoprice Mini Delta are carefully tuned to achieve fine details, the level of detail achieved by the Elegoo Mars is significantly higher than the detail that can be achieved by the FDM machine. Overall, lines on the MSLA printed model are much crisper than the lines on the FDM printed model. Also, because the Mars is capable of printing at 50 instead of 100 micron layer heights, the resulting print looks completely smooth. Supports also came off much cleaner on the Mars model, which can be seen when comparing the underside of the FDM printed model with the MSLA printed one. I have to again say that I was very impressed with this printer and will certainly use it for future projects that require small, highly detailed parts. The Elegoo Mars definitely gets the Super Make Something seal of approval. While both FDM and resin-based printing approaches can be used at home, each approach has its own unique advantage. For consumer and hobbyist machines available today, FDM printers have a larger build volume and easier cleanup, but resin machines are capable of producing smaller, more highly detailed prints. The printing approach you choose should depend on the specific requirements of your project, but if you're looking to get into resin 3D printing at home, I can fully recommend picking up the Elegoo Mars. Based on my tests, the printer produces prints with incredible detail and is about the same price as other entry-level FDM machines. A big thank you to Elegoo for sending a printer to me for this video. In case you're interested in picking up your own Elegoo Mars 3D printer or other items used in this video, check out the links in the video description below. I really hope this video taught you something that you didn't know before. If you enjoyed it and learned something new, please consider giving the video a like, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to my channel. That's all for this episode of Super Make Something Basics. Thanks for watching. Now go Super Make Something. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more episodes. Links to all project files can be found in the video description below. Click the subscribe button on the left to keep up with my latest projects. Click the cards on the right to check out more episodes and connect with me on social media. Thanks again for watching. Now go super make something.